So this is the sea of humanity that uh, one must go through. So uh, this will be scene one. Okay, so it's Friday, the uh, day before the first day of July. It's 50 degrees in San Francisco, and we're going to Alcatraz. Here we go. This is interesting. We're at the uh, top level of the ferry that's going to Alcatraz. You see this? It's all electric cells and a uh, wind turbine. It's actually a hybrid uh, cruise vessel. I'll send you a link to the company that produces it. I thought it was kind of interesting. I'm going to stop bothering the people around me. So I'll try this again. I had some technical difficulties with the uh, last shot. But pulling into the island right now, into the dock. It's the old maintenance dock. And I'll pan up so you can see the top level there. Uh, we'll be stopping here and disembarking, and I'll, uh, I'll pick up sometime after that happens. Breaking out into the open again. You can see uh, this was a guard barracks. When, uh, when, when this place was a prison, but originally this was, I think, the first military barracks they built on top of. I could be wrong, but I think so. We're headed up here, the top of the very long hill, to the guardhouse. And I think, uh, if I remember it, that's the powerhouse up there. And we can go see that too. But uh, I just want to get through this cattle slog, right? And you so. can just begin here to see the outline of the actual prison building. Almost at the top of the very long hill. If you look at the water tower, see the graffiti on there from when the Indian sickness was over in the 70s. They held it for a while. Uh, I think almost a year. More from uh, further up the hill. Any building that has shower like these, probably nothing good happens in a building like that. Yeah. You know they haven't covered up. Yeah, I can't imagine that being fun under any circumstances at all whatsoever. So, this is a uh, one of the first parts of the prison that the inmates would see, this is part of what will be the reception center. So, enjoy. This little lovely area you can see directly behind me is uh, one of the cell block areas. Um, this one is condemned and, and uh, not up the tour. See if I can gently move over into that. You can see the rows of cell blocks, and this is an idea that. Uh, Stayed with California prisons for a very long time. They almost all the old ones look exactly like this. This one is only three stories high. Uh, San Quentin, I think it's no, I don't think I know. San Quentin is five. Uh, so we'll move on with the tour. Okay, yeah, this is a cell uh, equipped pretty much the way it would have been in the day. And back up, get you a good picture. You get a bed which is standardly seven feet long. Behind it, a toilet. Behind that, a sink. And another. Uh, about seven feet long and four feet wide of space. Um, ironically, this is uh, about twice the space modern inmates have, um, because this would be a double cell in, in modern in a modern prison. Take a look at the uh, locking mechanisms on the doors. They're all ganged together. So you throw one switch, and these all mechanically open, and another switch, and they all mechanically close. Makes it charming. So this is one of the cells that they have uh, staged to to look as if um, somebody were actually inhabiting it. And from what I've seen in real life, this is pretty close to accurate too. Uh, and a whole bunch of artwork because the guy is all day to do artwork and he's got painting supplies. And I love the burning cigarette in the ashtray. It's absolutely awesome. It's a nice touch. But again, um, just from a purely practical standpoint, I know that's tiny, but that is a crap ton of space. Surely it is. Uh, one thing that's very striking to me about uh, every time I've been here and being here uh, is how relatively small this place is in modern terms. I'm, I'm going to flip around and just shoot that way, and you can see the, the three tiers of cells, and there are three streets or cell blocks. Uh, you can see this is C and D, and then you would have A and B. Um, so it's not huge by modern standards, and a, a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the elements of it are depressingly familiar. You'll immediately, I think, know what this thing is. Even without the telephone being there, you can see it's the visitation area. Some, some things absolutely never change. Super low light conditions, but uh, here you can see a lithograph of people, uh, civilians coming in using the visiting room. And 
this is what they would have seen from their side against the standard little embrasures would have a telephone in. And they would come here from the administrative offices of the prison. And uh, this is the, the main control tower where the top screw would sit with his little uh, lieutenants and what have you and uh, basically control the prison. Um, those panels control doors and uh, heating, ventilation, water, all kinds of other things. Uh, you saw the visiting room before, and let's see, behind me is uh, the administrative office. Where you'd have the officer of the day, perhaps, doing his report on the typewriter there. And then over here, you can see the control room with the, uh, the public address system for the prison. Uh, the control panel over there that control all the doors, also controls the lights, the heat, uh, when there was heat, and also the water. And we were able to turn off the water at any time. And of course, the water part I can see the most. It's the armory. It's completely locked. I don't know if I can get a uh, shot of this that does justice. I'll try. So, a meticulously done scale model. Yeah, I have a feeling the uh, refractive index of the glass is going to be nice and soft. Yeah. Oh, which was a good model. Of course, the phone won't focus on it because it hates me. But you can see, somebody went to a, a lot of trouble. Very realistic. I hope that wasn't too terrible. Okay, so this is on the, <laughs> it's the very top of the prison, uh, the top of the solid board. you got to put a prison somewhere. It's not a bad place to put it. A uh, million dollar views, although, of course, none of the cells had a view. Irony of irony. Right, uh, it was just a beautiful place. Just give me a minute. I think about what There you go. So, also, I'm just going to flip the camera. And you can see the guard barracks that we saw earlier. This is from the top of the hill. And we're going to head over there right now. Okay, so I guess uh, I guess no prison bar would be complete without a look at the chow wall, which is the heart, I guess, of any prison. And uh, the chow here was the best in the federal system. The guards and the inmates actually ate the same meals. Uh, so you can see behind me, uh, it's a chow hall. And as most prison chow halls are, it's rather large. And you walk over here. And uh, I'm going to walk over and take a look at the kitchen. And you can see behind me there's the kitchen area and uh, menu. I'm going to flip the camera around. And menu and new prison kitchen, which is an interesting concept, I have to admit. And I'm assuming that's where the guard would hang out, that little tiger cage there in the middle. Interestingly, you can see. I zoomed it in too far. I think you could think you could see there. There's a cabinet where the knives would be stored. And there's a silhouette for each one, so that they can tell if any are missing. It's an interesting place. There's one other shot of the uh, size of the channel. Pretty big place. Okay, so this is the uh, back of the cell house. And traverse along the rest of the admin building, the water tower that we saw before. And down this pathway is the Prison Industries building, which we're going to check out next. And right here is the other end of the island that we've yet to see. That, that entire escarpment down there is just covered in sea birds, and it's actually uh, cordoned off because it is now their home. So let's head on down here to the uh, Prison Industries, and uh, so you don't jog for the next five minutes with me. I'll see you there. Okay, so this is the uh, Prison Industries power plant. You see that? The chimney, I uh, can't get into it. It's completely locked off. I'm going to do a dizzying flip of the camera. Um, so you'll see behind me is the uh, the new prison industries building and the model prison industries building. They look pretty destroyed and burned out. We can go down there and take a look, but I'm not holding a lot of hope. I also just realized that for a significant portion of this, I had the camera zoomed in. So the footage may not be at all usable. It's kind of a bummer seeing that I've just spent two hours running around an island taking a photograph of and we may not be usable. Let's go take a look at this. The prison industries building, uh, the new one. Uh, this would have been where the prisoners did their laundry and uh, made wood items, machine items, and what have you. I, I guess every prison was something like this. You can uh, go around and flip around. You know, 
size of the scale of the place. It's probably uh, 100, 100 meters, 115 yards long, something like that. Big, creepy old building. And I'm going to flip the camera around so you can see. If you look up here at all the heating work and stuff, all the original, just completely rusted to hell. You get down here and you will see these forced air, hot water heating systems that you still see in buildings in San Francisco to this day. And another thing along the same lines that I found interesting, <clears throat> these sinks, you will see sinks, not in this condition, but exactly this same sink, a uh, iron sink, iron sink enamel coated in the utility rooms of all of these old buildings in the city. No one's not going like that. And I guess they stored one of the signs in here. So that's about it for that. There's some exhibits in here, but uh, mostly everything has been torn out. Looks like they had some overhead machinery going on here for some purpose. No idea why. But uh, that's about it for the model industries. Okay, so behind me, you can see the water tower from before. And we're at the very top now. And actually, this is the, uh, the wreck yard. So this would be where the prisoners would come. They had, uh, they had access to bats and balls and sports equipment and all kinds of shit. And they actually, they would play baseball here. And the thing is, home plate would be down there be the outfield and what actually happened is they had to change the rules because if you got uh, went over the wall it was actually an out because it shut the entire game down and you know, somebody had to go get a new ball as you can see i've got the yard for myself which ironically you know, in real life. but yeah the whole thing to me it's a it's a shit ton of things. And we're home. Hooray! Okay, so, a couple of thoughts on the uh, whole Alcatraz experience. Um, it's hard to know how to feel about visiting a place like that. Uh, it's an interesting place to visit, and fascinating, and kind of even beautiful in its own weird way. But, you can't forget why it was placed there, or what they did to people there, even though... You know, the vast majority, I guess, the people were terrible fucking people, but, yeah, it's a little depressing. It's super depressing to know that we really have not learned anything from that. As a matter of fact, if anything, we've gotten worse. Um, like I said, those cells as terrible as they look, in a modern California level 4 prison, you would put two guys in there in a bunk bed and lock them down 23 and a half hours a day and call it good. And, uh... I don't know what that says about us, man. I really don't. Anyway, that's it for today. I am going to go home and see if I can somehow chop this shit together into something that makes sense. So I've got a few hours of editing and editing again ahead of me, so I'll talk to you later on. Bye.